Hello beer geeks! In these strange and troubled times, you'll be glad to hear that the Craft Beer Channel is focusing on the important issues in the world, such as what even is IPA anymore? So, firstly, Johnny, mate, it is it's great to have you back. We're sitting this close, but still oh, won't even shake hands. I just, I've, got I fell off my there. bike and I hit my funny bone. That really hurt, but it's great to have you here, man. There you go. You know, that's real suffering. <laughs> um, yeah, so welcome back to another Sofa Sessions, or rather another What Even Is episode, where we drill down into one style and look at the history of it, the flavours of it, uh, and indeed the mythology uh, of those styles. Now, today's episode is inspired by an anecdote that I saw on Twitter, which was from a bartender in the States who was approached by a customer and this guy comes to the bar and he says, what IPAs have you got? So this bartender, she starts pouring uh, different, different IPAs for him. And the first one that he tries, he drinks it and goes, oh, that is disgusting. What is that? That's not an IPA. Right. And she says, it's a West Coast IPA. Okay. And so this guy, and no shade to him whatsoever, is so new to craft beer, that he hasn't actually come across West Coast IPA anymore. To him, New England. all IPAs are soft, juicy, hazy. Haze bombs. Yeah, exactly. So he's never had a West Coast IPA. And I was like, right, so there's people out there that don't know that these two ultra-modern styles of IPA exist. So today we're going to drill down firstly into West Coast IPA, and then we're going to show you what IPA has become. So let's start with West Coast IPA. <laughs> That's his IPA dance there. And we're going to start with one from my lockdown discovery Go on. Uh, of the year, which is Cheshire Brewhouse. They make amazing heritage British traditional styles and they make amazing modern, or rather old school stuff in the case of West Coast IPA, apparently. That's how old we are, Brad. And his singing voice sounds like Tom Jones. He does, yeah. Check out his Instagram and his Twitter because he sings when he releases a beer. It's amazing. The guy's uh, amazing. I feel like David Attenborough should be going like, and this is the brewer in his natural <laughs> habitat. So the first thing we're going to notice with this beer is that it is pretty clear. Hey. Would oh, you look at that? I can see my hand pass behind. I, I can see, yeah. If, right. if we were in, uh, if we were in the ocean or or a lake, I would be able to see a, a scary monster swimming by me <laughs> if I was had my goggles on. It's definitely not like a haze bro guy, is it? No, it's definitely not. It's it's a hop haze, a gentle mm. haze. It's a mm. haze that would have made beer geeks ten years ago go, oh, it's a bit hazy. Yes, yes. But nowadays we'd be like, where the haze at? Where's the haze? Right. Let's uh, let's get the aroma on this and see what's going to be different. Mm. So it's it's piney. It's uh, it's quite sweet actually. It's got caramel, right? Yeah, it's very caramel. So stewed, kilned malt that has mm. caramel flavours. On top of that, you've got the resin, like that mm. sweet stickiness from mm. the hops, and then you've got the pine, like the green forest resin. kind of aroma. And then there is a tiny bit of like, um, it's not stone fruit. It, it's you know grapefruity, orange pith yeah. kind of thing. A little, a little bit more bit, savoury. A little bit tropically. And you can smell the bitterness. I don't care what anyone says. You can smell bitterness. It's, it is that hop aroma, that sticky... Slight thickness. Yeah, exactly that. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a semi-savoury aroma. It's still a little bit mm. sweet, but it's much more savoury. There's no juice there. No. There's no orange juice. No. There's no mango juice. No. Bitterness! Nothing wrong with that, mate. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how that... That finish is lightning quick, almost yeah. like a lager. It's just boom, and you're done. And you're gasping for the next, next, like, little bit of relief because there's bitterness all over your palate. That, that takes you, takes breath away a little bit, the bitterness. Absolutely. And it's something that your palate, as you drink through it, will get more and more used to. Mm. Now, what happened after that, I call the bitterness arms race, right? <laughs> and we put it in our book, uh, Beer School, about this arms race, how... People got excited about bitterness, and much like spiciness, people got used to that bitterness, and they crave more and more and more. Yeah. Which resulted in McKellar, uh, most famously, making a 1000 IBU IPA. So, a beer with so many hops in, that the International Bittering Units, which is a calculation based on the temperature that the hops are added, and how many hops are added, that calculates roughly the bitterness that you'll get in a beer. Mm. 
Most beers, this beer is probably around 60. He yeah. took it to a thousand. And bearing in mind that, is it perceived, sorry, the bitterness that we can we can actually taste is yeah. up to about 180, right? Yeah, around about there. That's about the right. limit. Right. But, I mean, I drank that beer and you can still kind of tell something massive is going on. Mm -hmm. Like it attacks your tongue. So all of your, that point. your tongue just sort of went yeah, and then re much. retracted down back into your Like inside your me, guts. like when you get kicked in the balls. It's just like, <laughs> oh. Um, and so that, that was what was perceived as exciting and things got way, way out of balance. Yeah. And so what we saw then in around about 2014, 2015, shortly after those beers were coming mm. out, we saw the pendulum swing back the other way. Yeah. And obviously we couldn't go back towards macro lager. Mm. What we went towards was New England IPA. So, should we have a look at some New England IPA? Let's do it, man. I think, like, we've got another Cheshire brew house here, but I think we should go all out and go Daya. <laughs> Let's go for the Daya. Seize the Daya. Seize the Daya. Um, so this is their Saturated In series. So it's a single hop double IPA series that they do. Um, this is situa uh, situated, saturated in mosaic. Saturated in mosaic. So, as you can see as I pour this, Whoa. Very different colour, very different level of haze. Snowblind. That's what I'm experiencing here. <laughs> the, the thing you'll note is, so that caramel flavour that we were getting from the West Coast IPAs, you could see in the colour, it was a deeper, richer caramel mm. kind of colour. Here, there is none of that kind of roasted malt. It's no. all very lightly killed, biscuity malt uh, and oats and wheat. Yes. which explain the really silky body we're going to see and the great head retention. Soft, floral, um, a little bit bready. Yeah, there's yeah, kind of a wheaty element to it. Uh, but yeah, you're soft, it's soft, juicy. I get peach and I get mango. Mm. Those are the two overriding things. Um, and, and the interesting thing about New England IPA is we think that's all hop. Right, because that's what it is in the West Coast IPA. They use really clean yeasts like the US uh, USO5 um, that have zero flavour to them. The yeast just ferments it, you get a Does nice clean job. finish. Yep. The hops sing, the caramel balances it, right? Yep. That's West Coast. Here, we've got a really juicy yeast. It's based on a British yeast. It's kicking out all these peachy, sweet flavours that we associate with things like British bitter mm. or golden ales, mm. where we get that kind of peachy stone fruit thing. They've used the same here, and then they've backed it up with really juicy hops. So it's a very different approach to getting aroma and flavour into the beer. Yes. It's, it's yeast-led. Yeast-led, for sure. As much as it, it is hop-led. Nice. So let's give, it, let's give it a taste. Juicy. Juicy. So juicy. Cheers. Mango juice flavours. Just mango. Straight up mango. And that's kind of backed mm. by the lower carbonation, the finer bubbles, and the really silky body, which makes it feel more like orange juice. Yeah, the, I mean, yeah, totally. The whole experience in the mouth is 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 like the polar opposite of the West Coast. There's there's yeah. not that that effervescent kind of sting to it. The bitterness is not there at all. That it's smoother, it's softer. But it's sort of thicker as well, isn't it? Yep. It's, um, it, yeah, it just tastes like juice. Delicious juice. Delicious juice. Oh, that's not knocking it. It's, it's delicious, delicious juice. Um, so where this is like fiery, bitter, attacking your tongue, this mm. is gliding across it and leaving behind this residual sweetness. Pillowy. Which then has zero bitterness. Yeah. So that's the other major difference of what made that guy in the original anecdote go, whoa! Like he was not used to seeing that bitterness in his beer. Can you imagine? Uh, <laughs> being that young and, and not having experienced that, the, the shock he must have, he must have thought it was, it was wrong, like it had gone yeah. off or... Yeah. Particularly as he was expecting that and he got, you know, probably smacked in the face with 70 IBUs of grapefruit, caramel and pine forest. Yeah, your brain was, is going to shit a brick yeah. there, isn't it? It's like when you think in a car, you're going to turn left and you turn right and yeah. you're just like... Uh, uh, discombobulating. Yeah. Um, so how does this come about? How, what brewing processes create these huge differences? We've mm. talked about the yeast. So the yeast is different. One is a juicy, fruity yeast that leaves sweetness behind, doesn't fully ferment out. And the other one ferments as much sugar as you'd expect. The sweetness comes from the caramel uh, and it's leaving behind almost no flavour. So we know that's happening, but that yeah. doesn't explain everything because we've then got a difference in when the hops are added. Mm -hmm. So hops get bitter when they're added at 
higher temperatures. It's called isomerization. It converts uh, these compounds into, into bitterness. It releases it out into the liquid. With these ones, with the West Coast, it's all added in the boil. Right. There might be a, a little dry hop or even quite a hefty dry hop, so dur during or after fermentation, but so much of it is happening in the boil. Mm. So it's happening over 80 degrees centigrade, all that bitterness is being released into the beer. So it's like making a cup of tea or something when you're putting your tea leaves in into hot water. Exactly that, yeah. Right. If you just add a tea bag into cold water, it's not going to do half really, as much. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Exactly. So that's one difference. With the New England IPA, it's all on the back end. It'll be added potentially like below 80 degrees. So there's almost no isomerization of those hops happening whatsoever. So mm. there's almost no bitterness being added. Then they add some, and this is the important bit, during active fermentation. So this has two effects. One, you're adding those hops warmer. So you're adding them at 21, 22 degrees. That's what the, the, the yeast is working at. On top of that, because you're doing it during active uh, fermentation, you get a thing called biotransformation. And biotransformation is a chemical process where something that's living, like yeast, yes. breaks down chemical compounds. Yes. So the living yeast isn't just attacking sugar uh, to create alcohol, it's also uh, attacking the hop compounds cutting down those chemical compounds into new compounds yeah. and creating new flavours, which explains the stone fruity... Esters. Yeah. Very exciting. So that's called biotransformation. And then they'll cold crash it and add a f ton more hops. And like we've said, with tea, if you add to cold water, you don't get much. Mm. But the sheer amount of hops that's being added means that you're getting all of this aroma out very, very um, carefully so that you don't get the bitterness. So if you want to learn more about IPA generally, you can go to the Alchemist video that we did uh, where we had a tour with the founder of Alchemist, uh, John, and he'll tell you all about the history of New England IPA. If you want to learn more about West Coast IPA, we interviewed Vinny, the founder of Russian River. And you can go watch that and learn about the history of West Coast IPA and indeed both their thoughts on the other IPAs they make. <laughs> um, and what else? Yeast. Yeah, yeast. So if, if we've piqued your interest in yeast, why not check out our video we did at Lallemans where we explore how yeast is made. What is yeast? What is yeast? That's the name of the video, yeah. So those are all coming up after the bam 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 ending of this video. So check that out. Don't forget to hit subscribe and if you love what we do, support us on Patreon.